Hi, and welcome to this lesson on converting velocity time graphs to position time graphs. For this lesson, we'll use the velocity time graph shown here and show how we can convert it into position time information. We're always asking two questions from our velocity time graph. One is, how far did the object go? And the second one is, how did it get there? So we'll use the first segment of the four segments we have here, one, two, three, and four. Let's take first, I'll look first of all at segment number one. In the first segment, we see from the velocity time graph that the object went minus three meters per second, and that lasted for two seconds. So the graph really kind of makes a shape. If you consider the x-axis as one side of the shape, the graph as the other side, then this is defining a rectangle right here. So how far the object went is represented by the area of this shape. In this case, the area of a rectangle is equal to the base times the height. The base of this rectangle is two seconds, the time, multiplied by the height, which is minus three meters per second. So we get a total of minus six meters being traveled by this object during that period. So taking the area, which represents the displacement, we can show on the position time graph that if the object started at zero, in two seconds, it traveled minus six meters. So we've answered the first question, and that is, how far did the object travel? And we determine that by using the area of the defined by the graph and the origin. The second question is, how did it get there? And we answer that by looking at the shape of the velocity time graph. In this case, the velocity time graph for the first two seconds is a, shows a constant velocity. On a position time graph, a constant velocity is shown with a constant slope. So we want to connect our two dots that we've created here with a constant or a straight line. So we've answered the two questions. How far did it go? It went negative six meters in the two seconds. And how did it get there? It did it with a constant velocity. Therefore, we have a constant slope on our position time graph. Moving to the next segment, from two seconds to five seconds. Again, we're going to use the origin or the x-axis as one side of our shape. The graph is the other side. And again, we get a rectangle. This time, our rectangle has a area represented by its base times its height. The base is three seconds long. The height is negative one meter per second. And so the area of this rectangle is minus three meters. So now we've de determined how far the object went. Now you have to be careful at this point. If we start at minus six and we travel an additional negative three meters per second, we need to show that it ends at minus nine. And it takes three seconds to do it. So in one, two, three seconds, we go backwards an additional negative three meters. So we end up at the minus nine mark right here. So the area of the graph again has shown us in from two to five seconds how far did it go? Minus three. If we started at minus six, that means we end at minus nine. The shape tells us how it got there. Again, we had a constant velocity, so we'll connect these two dots with a straight line, straight as I can. In fact, I'll just make it a little straighter here. This is a straight line. This is a straight line here as well. Let's take a look at the time interval from 5 to 8 seconds. From the 5 to 8 second mark, we have an object or a velocity time graph that is showing that it went 0 meters per second. So this is the most obvious uh, that the area between the graph itself and the origin is 0. Because we're going 0 meters per second from 5 to 8 seconds, it seems logical that we went 0 meters. But again, if we ask, what's the area of the graph? The area of the graph is also 0 meters. Now, avoid the temptation of going to the 8 second mark and saying, well, we end at 0. We don't. All we've determined is that the displacement from 5 to 8 seconds is 0 meters. So from 5 to 8 seconds, if this thing doesn't go anywhere, at the 8 second mark, it's still at minus 9 meters. So if we put our dot based on our area, we didn't move anywhere. We took 3 seconds to go nowhere. And because our graph is a constant velocity, 
we'll have a constant slope on our line on our position time graph. The final segment's a little unique. First of all, let's ask the first question, which is how far did the object travel? So for this last segment, um, we can see that the area of the graph is instead of being a rectangle, it's forming a triangle. And I'll highlight that triangle here in let's use blue. So here's our graph. Here's our origin. The time interval is from 8 to 10 seconds. So we stop there. And now I'll just draw a line straight up at the 10 second mark. And we can see that our graph is uh, the shape of a triangle. It's produced a shape of a triangle. Again, considering that it ends at the origin and it's defined by the graph itself. So here's our graph, here's our origin, there's our triangle. The area of a triangle in this case is one half the base times the height. So now it's one half. Our base is the time. Eight to ten seconds is a two second time interval. Our height is our final velocity in this case. How high above the origin does the graph get? And that's five meters per second. So we end up with uh, five meters as the area of this segment in here. Notice that it's positive five, whereas the other areas were negative. That means that if we start at the minus nine meter mark and move forward five meters, we're going to end up at the negative four meter mark. And we took two seconds to do it. So there's how far we went, delta D. Here's the delta T, matches up with our velocity time graph. So when everything's said and done, we have our dot at the 10 second mark uh, at negative four position. The second question, remember, is how does it do it? Now this time, time it's different. In this case, our graph is actually a changing slope. Sorry, a changing velocity and when you hear changing velocity on the position time graph, that means a changing slope. We want to show a slope that at the very beginning of the trip down here is about zero, but at the end, it's, it's going to be equal to five meters per second. So if the velocity goes from zero to five, our graph on the position time graph has to start with a slope that is zero. And at this point right here, our slope has got to be about 5 meters per second to show how the object traveled from minus 9 to minus 4. So I'm just going to put a little line. I'll use a, a, a green line here. There's a slope that's pretty much 0 at the 8-second uh, mark. Here's a slope that I'm just going to estimate is kind of steeper, so let's call that about 5. I'm not too worried about being exact. I just want to get it qualitatively right. And so if I start at 0 and I end at a plus 5 and I make a smooth transition between, it looks a little something like this. So there is our segment of the graph from 8 to 10 seconds. How far did we go? Well, that's the area, plus 5 meters. How did we do it? Well, we did it with an initial velocity or slope of 0, ending with a final slope of around 5, and smoothly transitioning from 0 to 5 in between. So. In summary, when we go from velocity time to position time graph, we look at the area of the velocity time graph to give us a representation of how far we changed our position, not our initial or final position, but our change in position. And then we can ask ourselves, how do we connect the dots? How did it travel from one position to another? And the slope has to be consistent with the velocities represented on the velocity time graph. So in these time intervals here, here, and here, we have constant slopes because we had constant velocities. Here, we had a changing slope. And that's because we had a changing velocity.